Out here, in this forgotten ghost town, under skies older than time, the stars tell their stories. Tonight, I'm here to capture their light and share this nightscape with you. Wow, wow, wow. That's all I can say. This place is amazing. Welcome everyone. We're out in the middle of an abandoned settlement in the middle of nowhere. This place has been abandoned for probably close to 80 to 100 years. So everything is falling apart as you can sort of see behind me. But um, before we go for a walk and have a look around, I'd like to acknowledge all of my new subscribers that have joined the channel this month. It's been absolutely massive for Nightscape Odyssey and welcome aboard. I'd also like to acknowledge all of my existing subscribers that have made this channel possible and have been a part of it since I've started the channel. So thank you very much for that too. You might be watching this and you haven't subscribed yet. If you like nightscape adventures, tutorials, and even brand and gear reviews, then this channel is definitely gonna be for you. So smash that subscribe button down below and be a part of a big growing Nightscape Odyssey community. All right, guys, I think I've done enough talking. Let's go and have a look at this amazing place. As I step into the first building, I can almost feel the weight of time. What was once a lively hall, maybe even a chapel, now stands silent. In my mind, I can still hear the distant echoes, the soft rhythm of horse hooves on the dirt, children playing and families laughing. But now, there's only an eerie stillness. The cracked plates, the old bottles, the walls whisper their stories through what's left behind. As the sun dips below the horizon, the silence deepens the air cools and the shadows stretch and the stars prepare to take the stage. I set up camp, the fire crackles, smoke drifting into the night sky, a quiet moment to prepare for what's to come. And then as darkness fully takes hold, it's time to create my first composition. All right, this is our first composition behind us. We've got a beautiful barn. Um, and the plan will be to shoot this in a four panel panorama. I think I'm going to use shutter speed F4 with a 30 second exposure and an ISO of 6400. And all that should bring out the detail of the brick when I light paint it a little bit in between each shot. The plan is also then to stitch a sky in. Um, currently the uh, Milky Way core is miles above us so I have to wait till about two o'clock in the morning and that will come up sort of just a bit over here. Um, currently it's about 9.30 so um, I've got a little bit of time to wait. But just a question for you guys, would you camp out here and stay out here to take pictures by yourself? Um, I'll be interested to know, leave your thoughts in the comments. And yes, right around this moment I realised I may have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. I've got three compositions planned tonight, two panoramas, and then an artistic shot, along with multiple sky shots that I need to get all these compositions done. So it's gonna be a long night, so stick around and see if I can pull it all off. On to composition number two. Okay, so we've just finished composition number one. So composition number two is this beautiful little, it's almost like a chapel looking building. Um, I'm looking 
at doing a vertical panorama here. So I'm going to go up. The core is going to be exploding just above the um, the roof of the uh, the house here. So I'm going to do my sky. Sh my um, I'm going to do my foreground shots and get them in there. So I'm going to do panorama of the foreground, and I'll probably do four to five different panels. Um, I'll be shooting the foreground at um, f4 and um, 6400 um, and about 30 seconds on the uh, shutter speed and again i'll be light painting the building when i get to that so the foreground is going to be um four to five shots and then we'll be doing a um a sky shot afterwards yeah so hang around and let's see how this image comes out after shooting a multi-row panorama of this beautiful little building I can really start to feel the pressure mounting up now. The Milky Way is inching its way across the sky, and if I don't move quickly, I'll be scrambling when it's time to get my sky shots. Nights like these are all about timing. Every minute counts. One wrong move, and the perfect shot could slip away before I'm ready. Time to reset, refocus, and get Composition 3 ready before the stars take their position. Here's my third and final composition for the night. I found a simple, cool looking old bottle that I put on a fence post. And um, I've got my camera right up close to the bottle. I'm using an aperture of F4, still using 6400 ISO. And I'm using a shutter speed of 20 seconds. And I'm getting um, the stars a little bit blurred in the background as well. I have got a campfire just over here, so it's added a beautiful little blow to the bottle so i'm pretty happy with how that one's come out but um simple things like this can make great composition so keep an eye out for old bottles and that you can whack on fence posts or lanterns and things so yeah i think it's come out really well so here i am having a quick warm-up by the fire after all my composition shots i'm absolutely freezing tonight as far as South Australian terms go anyway. My friends in the UK would certainly laugh at me saying that. Now that I'm warmed up, I'll take you through the gear that I'll be using to capture the stars tonight for our final star shots. Just before we head out, I'll show you um, my setup. I've got my Nikon Z6 II camera. I've got the 20mm f1.8 Nikon Z lens, which I think is an absolute astro beast. I have got the Move Shoot Move Nomad Tracker um, with the Move Shoot Move V plate, a bull head, and then I've got an L bracket. On the Move Shoot Move, I've got a new polar alignment plate. So thanks Eric Wilkes for making this and giving this to me. That's awesome. And it really does make your polar alignment so much easier. Traditionally, you polar align up in the sky, but with this method, you're polar aligning through the ground into the uh, North Star because we're in the Southern Hemisphere. So straight down to Polaris. So a bit of a weird concept, but it really, really does work. Hit Eric Wilkes up for that. I'll leave a link in the description to Eric Wilkes. So thanks again. So that's starting to, uh, yep, starting to warm up now. So uh, let's go out and get our uh, sky shots. I've just come out into a paddock to get my sky shots to get away from the trees and bits and pieces and just before I polar align it I just want to show you a few things so definitely take your camera off before you use your phone to polar align it because this is all um, highly magnetized and it does throw your phone off completely so get rid of your camera and your lens before you polar align your star tracker the next step before we polar align is we have to move our phone around in figure eights just to get the phone used to the magnetic fields that we've, um, we're currently in. They change everywhere. So make sure you, you do that just to calibrate your phone. And then we're gonna, like I said before, we're gonna polar align, but we're gonna polar align through the ground. You may hear a heap of sheep. I'm in the paddock with sheep at the minute. So um, hopefully they let me polar align, I'm sure they will. 
and um, I use photo pills to polar align. Um, and the best one to do is spot stars and AR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to polar align it down to the north star, which is through the ground. Another tip is to zoom right in on your focal length on your night AR. It helps you get your polar alignment pinpoint. I've just realised I couldn't work out why it was dancing around. My eye watch was on my wrist. That's all it takes for it to throw it out. I'm just shooting my stars now. Um, I've got a. Um, I'm trying a shutter speed of ISA 3200. The sky looks a little bit brighter tonight than um, it usually is. Plus, I've got a bit of um, light pollution over there from the nearest city. Um, and I'm running a 60 second exposure. So. Um, at f1.8 so let's just see how it comes out um, whether we're going to get any trailing or not um, and i'll try not to kick my tripod legs and that always sucks when we do now with the milky way sitting so low in the sky right now i can capture a full arch in just one row of shots with my 20 mil lens i also switched over to my 28 75 nikon z lens and shot the core at 50 mil for a tighter composition don't forget to stick around until the end of the video to see how the final images turned out. Alright guys, that's uh, pretty much it for me tonight. Um, it's uh, getting on about 2am uh, and um, I'm looking forward to jumping into the camper and, and going to sleep. So I'm just going to pull my camera off this um, Star Tracker and put it on a lower tripod and set it up for a time lapse for the rest of the night. So hopefully it gets a good time lapse and the lens warmer keeps the lens nice and warm. And I apologise, I'm starting to get a bit tired so my words are not coming out as I would like them to. Thanks very much guys for getting this far throughout the video. I hope you enjoy the images at the end of this video. And um, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and become a part of a growing Nightscape Odyssey community. Don't click off the channel, be sure to watch this next video just here.